Hi, welcome to another Emmanuel Lutheran Ministries sermon as today we're diving into Romans chapter 12 as uh, we ask God um, and, and as we pray, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer, guide our thoughts and our words and our discussions today. Let our hearts be filled with your praise. Let us never forget the good things you do for us. For you have forgiven our sins. You have rescued us from death and you have crowned us with love and tender mercies. We ask you, Lord, to renew our strength and refresh our souls. This we pray in and through Jesus Christ, God's dear Son, our Savior. Amen. Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 9, reads like this. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Believe it to the wrath of God. For it is read, written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here ends our reading. Today, we're continuing our sermon series on family forward, family uh, visions and values for your home. And today we're going to be talking about love and respect. Talking about love and respect, it reminds me of a book that I read uh, way back in seminary, take, taking one of my uh, practical classes on uh, marriage and on uh, counseling for couples, uh, a book that was written by Emerson Egrets entitled, exactly that, Love and Respect. I believe we have some copies floating around here at Emmanuel if you'd like to look at them, but the whole book's premise is on the relationship of a husband and wife, on the love that a wife desires and respect a husband needs. This book is based off of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, that says, Nevertheless, let each individual among you also love his own wife even as himself, and let the wife see to it that she respect her husband. In other words, a wife needs to feel love, and a husband needs to feel respect, for without love, a wife will act without respect, and without respect, a husband will react without love. Whether you agree with the book or not, even this book shows that there is a relationship between love and respect, that there is a connection between the two of them, that where there is one, the other will soon follow. Today, we're talking about love. The love of God, and if you remember back to our very first sermon inside of this series, we are reminded that we have a relational God, a God who comes and brings man into this world, a God who is one with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a God who brings us together, a God who comes and we are able to rebirth ourselves, or we're able to bring more humans into it, a relational that we cannot live without another and we see a lot of this in that God so loved the world, right? That he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Again, the relationship between us and our father, right? We are his children. He is our God, that God sends his son then into the world because of love in order to reconcile us back to the father, and we find that Jesus then says that we are not just, and that everything is based off of love, 
the love and relational that the relationships that God has given to us are based out of love, but then all that we do is based out of love. As Jesus sums up all of the commandments, as we read in Matthew, he says, the greatest commandment is this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And then he says the second com- greatest commandment is just like that. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. So we see from John 3.16, we see from these two important commandments that Jesus institutes and he sums down the 10 that love is really a, the basis of everything. So it's important to talk about it. Love is the basis and foundation of all things, and it all stems from the love that our God has for us. The problem is that oftentimes we take that love and we change it and flip it around to make it what we want it to be. That we take this love, and with sin coming in this world, love is no longer the fo- God's love is no longer the foundation on which we build our families off, but rather it is the love that you and I make it to be. And oftentimes, that is the love of me, myself, and I. Love of self-convenience, a love, of, uh, a, a love that, that, that is fair, a love that, uh, that, um, uh, that we will change in order to be able to get what we want. Love will take on so many different looks and personalities. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to love. Philosophers out there say that in order to find out the true meaning of a word, you have to know the opposite of the word. And so and it's the yin and yang that a society will oftentimes clings to in order to understand life. That in order for good to survive, you have to know evil. And so if we look at love, in order for love to survive, they say that you have to understand hate. The English philosopher Francis Bacon, who lived in the 1500s and 1600s, shows this same idea when he says, in order for the light to shine so brightly, the darkness must be present. So Paul writes, and he starts off our text for the day, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And he's showing us that evil not only has no place in good, but good is what completely overcomes evil. Paul says that which is truly virtuous actively dispels evil. It's opposition that goodness is then grounded in this love, not our love, but rather God's love. And we as Christians, we as God's disciples are on search for this love because we know that God's love is so incredible, so overwhelming, so indescribable, so indestructible that our feeble human minds can't even grasp the love of God. And because this love sounds too good to be true, a lot of people out there say, well, it's too good to be true, so I choose not to believe it. Or they change the definition of love. The love of a romantic love, a love and of an erotic love, the love that we have for pizza and ice cream, a love that you had with flowers in your hair in the 60s, not the divine love that John writes about. The love that John writes about is the very essence, the very being of God, as he says in 1 John 4, verse 8, that God is love. That God's love has characteristics that go way beyond of what our ideas of what love is. That love does not just show itself in the ways that we love, but rather it is rather more than likely love shows itself in ways that we don't show love. For our love is trapped in this box. Our love is a safe love that we will love out of, uh, out of convenience, that we will love out of self-preservation. But rather God's love God loves, comes in and gives you everything, even his own life. God's love comes in and gives a respect and honor, puts you high above on a pedestal, even when you don't deserve it. That is love. God's love comes in and dispels all evil. 
And when we build our family off the love of God and not our love, it prevents broken relationships between brothers and sisters. And in its place, it solidifies and promotes this union that we have with Christ because we are saying, my family is not built off the love that I can give or the love that I make it, but rather it is off the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a perfect love. And because it's based off that love, I can then remove myself from, from things and and it's his love that comes in and shines through into our lives. Paul shows this and says this when he says, Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. There is no good inside of me, it's only the goodness of God. And we take that out of what do we take out what is evil in order for Christ's goodness to come through. And it causes us to then see that it is a privilege to then honor one another above yourselves to respect and love those around us. For after all, isn't that what our God has done for us, giving us salvation? This is the love of God. A man and a woman will come together to love and honor each other inside of a wedding ceremony, a love that is based off of Christ and his work to us as we look to represent Christ to our spouse, how often is it couples get together and then all, all of a sudden when, the, when one of the spouses does something that to irritate the other spouse, well, the other spouse will go off and complain about it to their friends. Well, that's not honor. We don't want to gripe and complain about uh, those uh, loved ones behind their back. Our love is often self-seeking, uh, and, and rather, it shouldn't be. And we do that not just with our spouse, but we do that also with our brothers and sisters, with our parents, with our neighbors, and with even people here in the church. But Paul comes in, he says, let love be genuine. Let that love be fervent in the spirit. Paul says, go back to the original intent of love, the love that comes and breathes life into this world. He wants us to have the same love that was given to all of mankind at the very beginning of time, the same love that was brought to Adam and Eve when sin was still void, which means that love can survive without evil. It's not a yin-yang kind of idea. A love that comes from the Spirit. And you and I are made aware of this love through his Son, Jesus Christ, who goes to the cross to take away all of our sins, reconciling us back to the Father. And when we come to know this love, our words, our actions then start to reflect as we become a witness of the Heavenly Father. We become an encouragement to all those we meet and we become a family of faith because our faith, our lives are grounded in the work of God, not our work. When it's grounded in the work of God, Text says, contribute to the needs of the saints, seek to show hospitality, to honor, to respect those around us, to treat others the way that God sees them. A love that comes in and dispels evil, which means we hear each other, we listen to each other, the words and actions that reflect the love of God. And when we reflect the love of God, we can then bring truth, bring encouragement to those we love. Ted Bolsinger, in his book called Canoeing the Mountains, Christian Leadership in Uncharted Territory, he writes, As human beings, we protect what we cherish. Love drives us to hold on to what is dear and cling to what gives us meaning in life. But it is also because of love that we are willing to change. It is a great paradox that love is not only the key to establishing and maintaining a healthy culture, but, it all, but is also the critical ingredient for changing a culture. Again, when we love God so much, a love that is driven in the spirit, we, often, we will, are willing to move ourselves aside and let God come in and breathe. For how we believe or, for, or how we view God will depend on how, how, we, how we treat those around us. 
Meaning if we don't believe that God can forgive our enemy, well, we won't forgive our enemy. If we don't believe that God can come to a child, well, there's no reason to teach them the gospel. If we don't believe that our God is a God of love, then we won't love those around us. You see, our God is bigger than our feeble human minds, right? Our God is bigger than all of this. The God of the, uh, the, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the God who has created all things, the God who has breathed existence into this world, the God who has created you and me and his goodness is, and his love is so much greater than our minds, than what we put into our boxes. And he shows this by showing us who his, he really is. As Paul says, bless those who persecute you. Repay no one evil for evil. Instead, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. If it was up to you and I, we wouldn't be doing those things. But because we have the love of God, all of a sudden it changes things. Now, we're no longer out there in order to try to impress, but rather we are out there being God's hands and feet because we already have an identity built on love, built on God himself. He shows this by telling us in 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter in the Bible, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And this is the love of God. The love that saved you, a love that does not seek after fairness, but rather a love that comes and responds to the evil with good. As it says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. This is love. The love of God that our God, God has even for you. So we take that and we show that to all those we meet. An unconditional love, a love that is always forgiving, a love that is God himself as we bring and are his hands and feet in this world. I don't know if you know this, but I was reading through some of the uh, articles and things in one of our uh, Lutheran publications, and it, it was telling us, uh, and it, it showed that um, it, reaching Muslims has been very difficult to do for Christianity. Don't know why often, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a mindset, it's a change, but we know that with the power of the Spirit, anything is possible. Well, for many years, it's been hard. It's been very difficult until apparently the last few years, last five years or so. Muslims are starting to convert to Christianity, and it's because of the, the some say it's because of the fellowship that the Christian church has. Some say it's for other reasons, but others are saying it's because Muslims have never truly experienced a true love like we're talking about today. A love that is sacrificial, a love that will, that will not insist on its own way, uh, to, uh, a love that will bless those even though you are persecuting, a love that will not repay evil for evil. And they're saying that is, that is genuine. And because Muslims are experiencing a love like that, all of a sudden they are starting to come to realization that that right there is power. That right there is God himself. That when you show love, you show God himself for God is love. A love that does not, again, come from ourselves, but a divine love that comes from the Father where we put ourselves aside and let him come in. Sometimes we take for granted that love that our Father bestows on us. And sometimes we need somebody else to show it to us. Well, that, my friends, is what the Muslims are doing now. That you have a love that's so indescribable, so unfathomable, so outward that we don't even fully understand it. But do you know what? It is true because the Bible tells us. 
It is true because we see it in his son, Jesus, who comes to this earth, who lives a perfect life, who dies on the cross and takes away all of our sins, reconciling us back to the Father, a love that is willing to come back out of the depths of hell in order to prove to us that he is God, showing himself to be the true, real God himself to bring us back to life, to give us everlasting life. See, that, my friends, is love. So our prayer today is that God may work in and through us, that God may continue to bestow his love on us, and that we may be able to show that love to all those we meet. And all God's people said, amen. As we close here today, I want to give you the benediction from Romans chapter 15. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Until next time, go with God's blessings.